Welcome to EAC Talk Show. I'm your host, Anthony Ellis. My guest today, he played an integral role in Cambodia's uh, entrance to Asia in 1999, Dr. Kao Kim Horn. Thank you very much for your time today. Um, so you're just about to fly out to Indonesia for your new job. Um, how do you feel? Excited. Uh, of course, overwhelmed because uh, this is a new role, new responsibility, new position. But uh, I'm very fortunate to be uh, appointed uh, by the ASEAN leaders with recommendations of, uh, by the uh, ASEAN foreign ministers. So I will go with uh, full confidence. The fact that the leaders have given me their trust and confidence. So I will go into this world with great feelings that my role is to continue to build on the successes and achievements of ASEAN that we have up to now. And we will continue to take ASEAN to the next level uh, in, in different uh, dimensions that we can do. I will support the journey of the ASEAN integration and the ASEAN you know, building, of course, everything for the ASEAN people. So the role for uh, Secretary General of, of the ASEAN and the ASEAN Chairman, obviously it's going to be two roles. What's the difference? Explain the difference. Of course, uh, the ASEAN Chairman is the leadership position role, meaning that all 10 countries by charter, ASEAN Charter, they take leadership role through annual rotation. The Secretary General ASEAN is to play a supporting role, particularly as a resource institution and also as an institution that would uh, keep the uh, what we call institution memories, but also to provide all kinds of support and services to the ASEAN chair on the one hand, but also to all ASEAN member states on the other. In addition, of course, we will work also with the external uh, dialogue partners that we uh, engage as well. Uh, the bottom line, of course, is that we have to work to support all the ASEAN mechanisms we have in place up to now. Look, so we have um, yeah, 10 Asian members and soon the 11th with uh, Timor hopefully joining soon. So your role is to, um, to help the, the chairmanship. So of course, every year that changes the chairmanship. So you, <coughs> this year's Indonesia, next year's Lao. So basically you will help, of course, the chairman each year um, when they change. So how long is your role for? Will be for uh, a period of five years. This is uh, the tenure for a period of five years. But I want to add on that uh, my role also is to support uh, as a member state that playing the coordinatorship role with the dialogue partner for ASEAN. In addition, of course, uh, uh, we also uh, support other, uh, basically, uh, the ministry meetings, the uh, senior official meetings and others that uh, we have, like I say, it's all the ASEAN mechanism. In addition, I want to say is that uh, Timur C has been admitted as the 11th member, but of course with the observer, observer status. Yes. So it's in basically, it's just a matter of time how uh, this will be changed to a more a full member. Excellent. So what is your vision um, as the leader of the Asian Secretary? What is your vision? Well, my vision is to continue to build on the uh, resounding success of ASEAN. Uh, ASEAN has a clear vision already, particularly the ASEAN post uh, vision 2025. Now, of course, uh, the way I look at ASEAN is to what I call the six P's. Uh, first, of course, is to continue to support ASEAN's role in maintaining peace. Uh, so the first piece, peace, uh, stability, and security in the region. Uh, this is very important. We cannot take peace for granted. Yeah. So uh, my role is to support ASEAN to, main, to, main, to make sure that this uh, regional peace uh, will be maintained. And of course, we hope that all the uh, countries in the region, but also all ASEAN data partners, sectoral data partners, global partners, and external partners yeah. will continue to support uh, ASEAN centrality and our efforts in the community building. Second, of course, is to, the second thing I would say, the prosperity. As in, we continue to work on building prosperity. Uh, it's important that we continue to enhance our economic recovery, economic integration, economic uh, connectivity. We want to see more, uh, uh, what we call intra ASEAN trade, meaning more trade within the region, within ASEAN zone, but also continue to enhance 
with our uh, partners through the FTA's arrangement that we have, including the latest uh, OSF, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Uh, this is all for the benefits. It's a win-win for all. And uh, the third thing, of course, is about the climate. Our region is very much vulnerable to mm. climate change and, of course, uh, the uh, natural disasters. So it's important that we will have to make sure that uh, we, we focus and give priority on how we uh, take care of the environment, the green economy, the clean uh, energy, and so forth and so forth. And the fourth P would be, at the end of the day, we talk about the people. As the end, we still have a lot of young people, the youth. They are the future of, of, of ASEAN. Yeah. So uh, the people is uh, what uh, is, is, is the top priority that we have to take care of our people. We still have pockets of poverty yeah. in the region. That's where our priority should also be focusing on. The next piece, of course, is building partnership within ASEAN, across the region, with external partners that we have. We need to continue to strengthen and enhance our partnership with all stakeholders. Mm. Finally, of course, ASEAN still have a lot of potentials. So I think it's important for us to identify and transform each potential we have into a, a great benefits uh, for all, for all of the, uh, uh, those uh, stakeholders. So it's important for us to uh, make sure that uh, potentials do not stay potentials, but they become uh, the realities, they become transformed and uh, produce substantial benefits for all the different stakeholders in ASEAN. Yes, yeah, some great principles there. You know, um, with Cambodia also being such a uh, young generation, you know, average age I think is 27 years of age, so they have a, a lot of um, young children to uh, or to, to learn still a lot. Um, and I've seen Cambodia change over the years, and and, and Asian in general it seems to be a lot more peaceful, more um, free trade agreements and, and things like that, which is I suppose a big part for you to to get involved in. Well, you know, I mean, uh, now what we want to see is to see the increasing people to people's ties. So that's good for tourism in the region. That's way of examine uh, in the coming uh, weeks, we will see uh, the uh, minister, the two ASEAN tourism meeting coming up. So uh, it's good to continue to focus on uh, reviving, reviving and strengthening the tourism cooperation within the region. It's all about how we cooperate and how we work for mutual uh, benefits and collaboration. And, and, uh, and um, unfortunately, with too many wars happening at the moment in one of our Asian sister countries, unfortunately, uh, uh, unsettled at the moment, I suppose that will be also a big part that tried to things up in Myanmar to, to make things back to normal. Um, well, for Myanmar, I think it's important for us to continue to stick to uh, what uh, have brought us in this far, yeah. and that is unity yeah. and solidarity of ASEAN. Of course, Myanmar is going through very difficult internal challenges, and it's important that we continue to support and constructively engage with Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, at the end of the day, the Myanmar people will determine their own future through Myanmar-led, Myanmar-owned process. But of course, ASEAN as a community uh, we have to support uh, uh, Myanmar in, in ways that would be yeah. very uh, uh, well, very safe and peaceful and inclusive for the Myanmar people. Of course, that's why uh, during Cambodia Championship ASEAN, uh, Cambodia, of course, and ASEAN pushing for the uh, reduction, if not elimination of violence on the ground uh, to have a permanent ceasefire eventually or who causes to uh, ensure that there will be inclusive, uh, broad uh, political dialogue. And of course, at the same time, is to allow humanitarian assistance uh, that will be uh, able to deliver to the Myanmar people who are needed uh, greatly, and of course, without uh, any obstacles. And climate control is also a, a difficult one because there's so many countries, not just with Asian, it's, it's the whole world that's involved uh, uh, with nature and things are changing and unfortunately um, some of humans have poisoned the kind of thing. So it's re-educate and, and try to redirect and change things to make climate control better. Well, of course, uh, it's, it's a global issue, but 
actions and response where we rely with each nation state and of course the people. Mm. Uh, all of us have a uh, role responsibility to help uh, reverse the current climate change. Uh, we've seen that now uh, uh, the uh, what some call climate crisis, uh, some even call climate emergencies. But what's important is that uh, the climate change has produced uh, a lot of destructive uh, outcomes mm -hmm. we've seen already. So massive floods, drought, uh, even the temperatures now going down very, very low, uh, particularly this year, uh, very, very cold. So I think it's also this part of the world is that we've seen now uh, uh, a lot of changes and that will affect uh, the lives of the people in this region and around the world. Um, and how many times has a Cambodian held the job as the Secretary General of ASEAN? Um, we know you've just mentioned it's going for five years, so yeah. Yeah, I, I, for Cambodia this is the first time. First, first time. time. Well, congratulations. To be the first one must be an honour. You know, you must be doing something right to be able to um, to be chairman and oh, sorry, the, the Asian uh, Secretary. Well, it's uh, again, it's uh, I've been nominated, uh, selected by uh, the government, right of Cambodia, particularly our Prime Minister, who has given me the opportunity and given the trust. And of course, uh, I was uh, uh, basically uh, approved by and uh, the ASEAN Foreign Minister and the uh, record in me and for the official appointment by the ASEAN leaders. Yeah. Excellent. What political and diplomat uh, affairs will you first start um, handling to do? Well, the first time I was uh, initially, I was working as a think tank uh, in the think tank, think tank sector for roughly about 10 years. Mm -hmm. Then I was invited to serve in capacity as advisor to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. Uh, and from then on, uh, within the next uh, few years, I was promoted to the Secretary of State uh, of the Ministry of of foreign affairs and international cooperation, but I was already working on ASEAN uh, as ASEAN some leader for Cambodia or ASEAN senior official leader for Cambodia. Excellent. So, what extent will you help the Cambodian given um, to gain popularity and during your term? Well, it's not about because uh, I'm, I'm going to be the Secretary General of ASEAN. So I will be working for the ASEAN interests. Uh, the ASEAN interests will be always at my heart. And that's what I have to be very clear and be mindful of it, that uh, this is the role that I will uh, do is to promote the interest, the collective interest of the ASEAN community. Excellent. And what are the challenges facing the Asia in terms of uh, regional and non-regional uh, politics? What, what, what are the major? Well, of course, uh, for ASEAN, we have been uh, dealing with a number of challenges. Mm. Some have been there for some time, some are quite new, for example. Uh, challenges was ranging from the issues uh, of, uh, now we have Myanmar, of course, uh, we have South China Sea issue, Korean Peninsula, uh, even more intense now because of the repeated uh, missile tests you know, and yes, getting yes. Uh, getting more and more basically uh, being fired, test fire. And uh, of course, uh, we also have uh, recently the pandemic, like COVID-19 pandemic now, was still a priority for ASEAN to make sure that we making a, a good transition, uh, a great recovery in this area. Uh, COVID-19 is not over yet, but uh, so that's why the priority remains there. Then we have climate change, right? The food and energy security challenges there as a result of the uh, Ukraine-Russia war, basically, or uh, the war in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And that has been uh, major repercussions for us and but also for the entire uh, global community. Then, of course, we have uh, other issues that uh, we, uh, we, we have seen already, particularly the uh, the tensions, what we call the geopolitical strategic tensions, yeah. that uh, ASEAN will continue to work as uh, a force for good, a force for peace, and a force for stability, and a force for prosperity. 
And um, of course, last year, um, uh, 2022, um, Cambodia held the chairmanship, um, the Prime Minister um, Hun Sen, who did actually a fantastic job. It was a very busy year. We signed 103 um, documents were signed. And um, so it was a big, big year for the ASEAN. Do you expect another big year this year? Well, last year was a, a very important year, yeah. uh, particularly after uh, several years of COVID-19. Yeah. And then uh, we had been having uh, uh, what we call the uh, online meetings, a lot of online meetings. And then for the first time that the ASEAN leaders, uh, they met uh, physically uh, among themselves, but also with the leaders from the Dalai Partner countries. So Cambodia was in a position to host all these meetings and our, uh, of course, Prime, our Prime Minister, Prime Minister Hun Sen was able, Sunday Hun Sen was able to stay here, uh, of course, indeed, uh, ASEAN during Cambodia ASEAN chairmanship. Of course, uh, also it's a great team there. We have the double Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Press Corner and his team. And of course, uh, as in the world, it's, it's involved everybody, including security, include uh, other sectors. So it was, a, I would say, a resounding success for Cambodia. But this year, I think, uh, under Indonesia chairmanship of ASEAN, we expect Indonesia to play a very successful uh, chairmanship also, uh, because uh, Indonesia has all the resources and the experiences and the leadership that uh, it takes to to move as the end for 2023. So uh, the ASEAN, as we know, every year it, it changes to um, to one of the 10 um, partners. And of course, the um, then the chairmanship is in charge for that year. So that they are based all over the 10 Asians, but your headquarters and you are based in Jakarta only? Well, the Asian Secretary has always been based in Jakarta, Indonesia. And uh, that's where it has been, and that will always be. I think uh, the staff and the Secretary General of ASEAN they work at the ASEAN Secretariat, and in fact, some of the meetings of ASEAN now uh, have had been, but also uh, will also been or, uh, will be organizing at the ASEAN Secretariat. So there, this is where uh, a lot of activities, a lot of functions and events are taking place, have been taking place, and also will be taking place. Thank you very much for your time today. I, I know you're flying out soon to um, Indonesia. Um, giving us your time, thank you very much. And, and, and good luck for your new position and um, all goes well. Thank you very much. Okay. There you have it, the Secretary General of the ASEAN, Dr. Kao Kim Horn. It was a great honor to have him here on a EAC talk show to give us his last interview in Cambodia, right here in the VIP terminal in, in Phnom Penh International Airport, just before he left for Indonesia. We thank you very much for your precious time. Thank you all for watching EAC Talk Show. I'm your host, Anthony Ellis. Goodbye.